Hi guys, I'm Jessica Beck, your IELTS teacher. In this last episode of our grammar series, guys, Aubrey and I are going to give you a fantastic grammar hack specifically for speaking part two, how to use the very complex and impressive past conditional structure. So guys, Oh my gosh, you are going to impress the examiner if you use this correctly. So listen up today. And guys, remember, you can learn what you would get on your IELTS exam if you took it right now for free. Go to allearsenglish.com slash IELTS quiz. You will get your free estimated IELTS band score and resources. Go to allearsenglish.com slash IELTS quiz. This is an IELTS Energy Podcast, episode 885, When Grammar Matters, part 10, the best condition for speaking, part two answers. Welcome to the IELTS Energy Podcast from All Ears English, downloaded more than 18 million times with former IELTS examiner Jessica Beck and Aubrey Carter, the IELTS whiz. If you are stuck with a low score, our insider method will help you get the score you need to unlock your dreams. Get your estimated band score now with our two-minute quiz at allearsenglish.com slash my score. In this final episode of our illustrious grammar series for IELTS, we talk about a complicated conditional tense that will not only raise your grammar score, but also your fluency score for IELTS speaking part two. Don't miss it. Hey, Aubrey, how's it going? Hey, uh, I just got back from the weirdest drive by with my daughter. She had to pick up her yearbook from junior high and get her gym clothes and her books. And that's it. They're like, have a good summer. There's no graduation. She moves on to high school without any kind of fanfare. And it's kind of a bummer. It is kind of a bummer. I mean, that that's such a, like a standout memories of growing up, the different graduation yes. opportunities, even from middle school to high school, because that's a huge transition. Yes, I wish I would have been able to see her, you know, say goodbye to her teachers and walk across the stage. She earned um, an honor, uh, this Golden Scholar Award, and they emailed and said, oh, we're not doing the big celebration we usually do where we present her with this honor. And I wish she would have been able to accept that in person. Yeah. Okay. So that is very sad, but <laughs> I'm just g- <laughs> I I just want to, you know, call attention to that amazing grammar you just used, though. The (laughs) the conditional, which is, it happens to be what we're teaching today. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy that we would come (laughs) up with an example so perfect for you guys. Uh (laughs) But this is such a great, like, way to remember the usage of what we're talking about today, guys. This conditional, um, to express sort of regrets, to talk about an unreal past. And we're going to tell you guys exactly where this could save you on your IELTS speaking test today. Um, But sort of having this context helps you to understand, right? We're talking about something in the past that is regrettable, right? How we wish it were different, how it could, how we want it to have changed. And it's kind of complicated grammar. But if you remember the context, guys, because like, yeah, her her daughter is missing out on this important graduation ceremony, on creating those memories. And so the grammar we're talking about today, like you have to use this this uh, unreal past conditional to even talk about something like that. Yes, and the perfect place to use it on the IELTS exam is on speaking part two, where if you've been asked a story and you just are finding, I mean, and asked a question and you're telling a story, but finding that you don't have that much to say, this is perfect to extend the story by talking about what you wish would have been different, what you wish would have changed. It's perfect. Yes, it's so good, guys. So if you feel like, you know, okay, I got, I said everything. I told the whole story. I even had a conclusion and the examiner is still staring at me. What am I supposed to do? So then you could talk about, I mean, 
you know, if the situation had been different, right? Um, knock out that really complicated, impressive sentence structure and extend that answer, right? Imagination, that helps us a lot on the speaking exam and the writing exam. And like, we are getting pretty complicated with the grammar today, guys. And yeah, sure, we tell you, don't worry too much about grammar, right? Because it could take a whole year to improve your grammar score. But little things like this, if you can perfect little sentences like this to strategically place in the exam, then it will increase your grammar score. Yeah, it's so important to focus on the score. You can waste so much time spending time on things you don't need if you're not really aware of what the examiner's looking for the score, and what specifically you can do to improve your score. So if you guys want to check out, you need to go to allearsenglish.com slash my score. You can take a quick two minute quiz to find out what score you would get if you took the IELTS exam today. And then you're provided with free resources that can get you on track. So you know exactly what to be focusing on. Yes, because guys, maybe you're wasting your time studying grammar books, right? When really, you need to be working on some reading skills, some listening skills. So find out where you are, guys. Go to allearsenglish.com slash my score. All right. So Aubrey and I are going to nerd out on some grammar today because <laughs> we do care about grammar, right? Yes, exactly. With our level of education, we both have master's degrees and they both were focusing on the English language linguistics for you and ESL for me. We do think about grammar. We notice when grammar is incorrect and so do examiners. That's the thing. Yes, you don't want to spend too much time on it, but there are simple, basic things you can do to improve that grammar score. And this whole grammar series, this is our final installment. Yes. All 10 of our episodes have focused on that. The things you can do that are pretty simple that do improve your score. Exactly, guys. So like Aubrey said, okay, examiners will notice if you use this sentence structure correctly, okay? So the sentence structure, again, it's expressing something that did not happen in the past, right? Um, that you maybe regret, that you want to, uh, you wish you could change about the past, right? Um, so what is that grammar structure, Aubrey? Yes, so you use if and then the past perfect tense with would have, and that's followed by a past participle. For example, if only I would have written more essays, I would have scored higher on IELTS. Nice. Okay. So guys, you may have learned this as the third conditional. So as the conditionals increase in number, right, from zero to three, they do become more and more unrealistic. Like that's the way the numbers work, right? The zero conditional is like factual, right? It's like, it's going to happen. And then once we get to the third conditional, the last one, that's when it's like, okay, now we're talking about an impossible past, not even an impossible future. <laughs> so that's, that's the way the condition are organized, guys. So today we're talking about the third one, which I think is the most complex one and definitely has like one of the most specific sort of meanings, which means it's rare. Okay. We don't use it very often. So again, strategically, guys, learn this structure today. Definitely read the blog post for today's episode. Um, this is episode 885. So you can see the structure, example sentences, and then do examples yourself. So that first one, right? If only I would have, if only I I would have, or if I would have written more essays, I would have scored higher, right? Yes. Or if I had written that past perfect, if I had written more essays, I would have scored higher. So changing that into if only, same meaning, extra complicated sentence structure. If only I would have, instead of if I had written. So if only I would have written. Same meaning, okay? What's another paraphrase for that? Well, it's interesting how when you hear this phrase, uh, natives often will just say that first part. They'll say, oh, if only I had written more essays. Or if yeah. only I would have written more essays. And the rest is sort of implied what might have happened. And you'll even hear it as an expression. We'll just say, if only. <laughs> oh, if yes. only. <laughs> In conversations, right? Like, so guys, this wouldn't happen on the test. You won't need this for the test. But you do want to learn English just for life, right? So if you're having a conversation and somebody expresses regret about something and you want to, like, agree with them, then you would be like, yeah, if only. <laughs> that does happen. Yes, that's a really good native phrase. Right. But as a parallel here's another good one. You could say, if I could go back, I would have written more essays. Then I would have scored higher. So that nice. means the same thing. It's just another interesting structure. 
Hello, future IELTS candidates. If you took the test today, could you get the score you need? Find out now. Go to allearsenglish.com slash my score. Take a two minute quiz and get your estimated IELTS score and resources just for your level. Go right now to allearsenglish.com slash my score. Okay, so just to summarize, guys, so far we have the basic third conditional. If I had written more essays, I would have scored higher. And then we add the if only, making it super native. If only I would have written more essays, I would have scored higher. And then parallel expression, right? If I could go back, if I could go back in time, if I could climb in a time machine right now, <laughs> all of those would be acceptable, guys. And then I would have written more essays, then I would have scored higher, right? And then what is the last parallel expression for that, Aubrey? Yeah, so to use I wish. I wish I would have written more essays, then I would have scored higher. Exactly. So all three of these, they really mean the same thing. Yep. You're using the same grammar, but so many different, interesting, the examiner would be very impressed if you're able to use these. Yes. Oh, my God. Now, in the spirit of not making things too complicated for you guys, because you know we are not about that, our motto is simplify, practice, succeed. So, guys, we just want you to choose two of these structures, okay? Do not try and learn all four different sentences we just talked about, because you don't need them, guys. Just choose two and then perfect them, okay? So you don't end up mixing things up and putting wood in the wrong place, right? So definitely come back to the blog and just choose two of these structures to memorize and practice. Okay, so now Aubrey and I, we thought of three speaking part two cards that often give students difficulty. Um, uh, students run out of stuff to say with these three cards, okay? Aubrey and I do mock speaking tests with so many students. I did over 5,000 speaking exams when I was an examiner. So believe us, guys, these three are tough. So the first one, speaking part two, you could totally get this. Describe your favorite teacher from high school. So a lot of students, like, we can't remember, you know, no, that's that tricky. in a lot of detail. And, like, you probably didn't know that person too well anyway. So what are you going to say for two minutes, right? Um, so most likely, you're going to run out of stuff to say. So how could we use this strategy of twisting it into this imagined past, Aubrey, to get yeah. that fluency? I love it. If you, you, you know, say their name, say it, and you're probably not going to have a full two minutes, but then you could say something like, I wish I would have kept in touch with her. She seemed really great. And now that social media exists, I could friend her on Facebook and I would be able to see what she's doing. So if you start talking about some imagined past that didn't happen, think how much more you could say. Yes, totally. Because at that point, you're just like making stuff up. You're just yes. telling a new story. What might have like, happened? If I could go, if I had a time machine, if I could go back, I would have spent more time with this teacher and tried to get to know them better because this person seemed like such an, a fascinating human being. And at the time, I just knew them as a teacher, right? I wish I could have been actual friends with this person. <laughs> Yes, exactly. As in, like, I would have gone to Paris with them. I don't know. Like, you could make you anything You could say anything. Up. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, now, this next one, guys, also difficult. I think I did a YouTube video with a sample answer about this, actually. So don't miss out. IELTS Energy TV, guys. Two new videos every week. Um, okay, describe an indoor game you played as a child. So, again, like, why is this hard? Well, a lot of people cannot remember their childhoods like that yes. well. Um, and it depends on what kind of childhood you had. I didn't play a lot of indoor games. I was outside all the time. So like this one would be hard for me too, I think. Yeah. But then if you start talking about hypotheticals and say, I, I wish if only I would have had more time to play with my siblings or if only I had had siblings that I could play more indoor games with. You start talking about <laughs> hypotheticals and yeah, you could talk all day. Yeah, totally. Um, I could say like, you know, 
I wish I would have learned how to play chess. Then I think I would be smarter today. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> That's really the assumption with chess. If you learn chess Isn't as a child, it? you're smarter as an adult. It's probably true. I'm sure it is, right? Like yeah. we want, like I have this image of a little kid with glasses listening to the Mozart and Aww. Bach and playing chess yes. and just like <laughs> conquering the world and being friends with Bill Gates later or something. Like that wasn't me, you know. Um, know right? All right, so here's the last one, guys. Describe a person in the news who you would like to meet. So this is also a hypothetical, right? So this is just begging for you to use this structure. Yes, it is, <laughs> and it's a difficult one because I feel like a lot of people, they'll read the news, they'll watch the news, but they might not know um, specific names if they're not really, you know, they'll totally. just kind of know facts. But do you actually like pay attention to the names of who is doing what? That's kind of tricky. Well, maybe, maybe. Uh, okay, I'm going to switch this around. So, so far, guys, we've talked about the strategy of building a hypothetical past with this structure if you run out of stuff to say, right? So it would go at the end of your speaking part to answer. But I'm going to switch it up and put it at the beginning to I maybe like explain why I don't have a lot to say about this topic. So um, providing context, being honest, this is all, these are all factors and getting you that seven or higher for fluency, okay? So I could be like, oh, if only I had read the news more recently, instead of studying so hard for IELTS, I would have a better answer right now. <laughs> oh, I really like that, actually. If I could go the back. The sort of passive aggressiveness to the examiner, like, oh, I have been studying so hard. You shouldn't have given me this question. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> If I could go back, I would read the news this morning so that I could yeah. think of something to say right now. <laughs> I know. Oh, I love it. All right. So two new strategies today, guys. Both increase your fluency score and your grammar score. So use this hypothetical structure, this third conditional, to talk about past regrets, okay? At the beginning of speaking part two, if through no fault of your own, you do not have a lot to say about this topic, use this structure to say why, right? Like, how would you change the past so you would have something to say? So that's the first strategy. That's awesome. Second strategy, you you finished, you said everything you had to say, and you're like, ah, I need more to talk about. So use this, build an imaginary past and keep talking. Okay. Oh my God, guys. Now, not going to lie, this is some complicated grammar, guys, but if you master two of these structures, so such a great way to increase that grammar score, guys. So definitely come back to the blog, allearsenglish.com slash IELTS. This is episode 885. Yes, it's been really fun doing this whole grammar series. I feel like the more I've like dug into grammar, I'm realizing how much is out there that students could just waste so much time on. And oh, all of these grammar courses, like other teachers might be giving them the easy, uneducated way out. Even IELTS teachers telling you to rely yeah. on the bullet points for the, yeah. for the part two. But that won't be enough for the two minutes you need for part two. And yes. it's also not enough for a band seven or higher. In order to get those scores you guys need, you need to be in three keys. We have all the strategies you need. So go to allersenglish.com slash keys. Sign up today so you can get the basic grammar, the things that really will help you on IELTS. You can stop wasting time. Yes, because, yeah, <laughs> teachers love to talk, guys. And sometimes <laughs> teachers just, they just keep teaching. It's in their nature, whether you need it or not. So it's time to get strategic, right? Don't waste your time anymore. And guys, you know what? If you have an IELTS question, you can email us, guys, and we might even do a future episode about it. So any great specific question you have about IELTS, guys, email us, support at allearsenglish.com. And last Lastly, guys, remember, you can get your estimated IELTS band score right now, allearsenglish.com slash my score. All right. Awesome. Wow. This is the end of an era, the end of a grammar era. <laughs> series. It's been really fun to find the best ways to help students not be stuck. We don't want you to be stuck at a six. We don't want you to be stuck without the ideas you need and something to say on the speaking exam. So if you've missed any of our grammar series episodes, go back, listen to the ones you missed. They all have such gems, you guys, and only stuff that you really need. Yes, awesome. All right, Aubrey. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. 
Yes, you too. Thanks, Jessica. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to IELTS Energy. Hit subscribe now and don't forget to find your estimated band score at allearsenglish.com slash my score.